Hello and good day everyone. We are the trio group since it consists of three of us and we will be discussing about the nature of N elements required in order to prove a required to make injunction. Okay. Um, enjoy! Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day. So, basically, Quetimate injunction is an equal remedy available only to a security. The Quetimate remedy is available to any equity claimant given that the elements required for its issuance are presented. Quetimate is a Latin term meaning because he fears which offers a way before an injury is occurred to receive equal relief. A party requires the support of the court in a bill of kitimate because it suspects some potential probable harm to its rights or interests by the defendant's wrongdoing or neglect. This bill is not valid if an accident which needs some compensation or other relief has already occurred. Similarly, the rate of ketimit is originated in equity to achieve the ends of precautionary justice and to avoid wrongs or expected mischiefs, and not merely to remedy them when done. While the read is old, in a number of situations, modern courts continue to recognize bills of ketimit. Thus, it has also been used in litigation to determine property rights, to determine the liability of the insurer to protect, and to determine the violation of a patent. The writing of the Kutimit, however, can do far more than only declare freedom. It can also be used to provide force to release. For instance, the rate of Kutimit was used to compel precise performance and a waterfront property purchase contract and in a lawsuit to perpetuate evidence of a seriously wounded person after the commencement of an action. Nevertheless, as an offensive tool, Ketimit seems to maintain in the hands of sureties its greatest vitality. There are two elements required in order to establish a Ketimit action and those are the proof of imminent danger and the proof of substantial apprehended damages. I will be talking about the proof of imminent danger. This goes way back in the year 1884 when equity courts laid down a strict standard for the kind of quiet human injunction, especially when it comes to the proof of imminent danger. The evidence that the endangered injury will be nearly ruined and proof that whenever the injurious situation ensue, it will be impossible to protect the plaintiff's interest if relief is denied. However, what appears from the above reviews of case law is that there is no definite way of determining what could amount to the proof of imminent danger in a patent case. Mere marketing consents, mere marketing regulatory permissions, silence on marketing launch plans by the generic or mere charges of clinical trials will not in themselves be sufficient to establish imminent threat. Also, there is always a possibility of the defendant countering each of these factors thereby decreasing the degree of the imminence of danger. Referring to the keys of Merck Sharp Dome and Bristol Mayors against Teva Pharma BV, the claimant was a patentee of Evervirenz, which is a non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor which was used in controlling HIV infections. The license was due to expire in August 2013 and the patentee prayed for a quiet team injunction in 2012. It feared that Teva, a generic manufacturer, would do an infringement of its patent. The prayer was because in October 2011, 2011, Teva had applied for marketing authorization for a generic version of FRFRNs. When the patentee asked what the Teva's launch intentions were, they refused to reveal anything, explaining that their plans were private. Next, in January 2012, this authorization was granted. 
Then the Canadian courts have been less likely to admit claims requesting a quality made action since they adopted a strict two prong test in judging whether a quality made action should be admitted and said that they do not think they therefore that this shall be very far wrong if they lay it down in, and that there are at least two necessary ingredients for a quality made action. Looking at Ali Lilly against Radio Farm, the court held that without the evidence of actual manufacturing, sale, import, and others, the court could not give its jurisdiction as it was a speculative statement characterized as the exploitation of process. This conclusion was based on the appellant's statement of claim and it gives its effect to establish the proposition that a quiet action must be based on more than mere possibilities. In Singapore, referring to Burberry Limited against Megastar Shipping PTE Limited and another appeal, the appellants were trademarked proprietors of luxury brands Burberry and Louis Vuitton. Counterfeit goods that infringed the appellants' trademark were shipped from China to Singapore in two sealed, sealed containers. The goods were to be transshipped from Singapore to Indonesia, but seized by the Singapore customs before any shipment could occur. There was no evidence to suggest that they were aware that they were forwarding fake goods. Good. The freight forwarder's job was to only receive the cargo from China and forward it to Indonesia. Therefore, there is no evidence for the quality made injunction. Since the goods have already been disposed of, there is therefore no imminent danger or the possibility of any apprehended damage to justify the granting of an injunction. The High Court Judge of Singapore dismissed the, tra the trademark proprietor's claim since a mere intention to export was insufficient. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Khairan Nisa binti Muhammadino and my metric number is 054917. Today I will talk about the second element of the Quia Time Mat which is the proof of substantial apprehended damage. Okay, it has been identified that in order to be granted uh, by the court a temporary injunction to restrain the apprehended injury, the said injury must be definite or rather inevitable to a material extent. So, we can reasonably assume that the courts are not hesitant to interfere, if appropriate, in order to deter damages from arising, given that the specific circumstances of the case indicate that such intervention is permissible on the merits. Jumping to the cases that related to this element, firstly, in London Borough of Islington Business Alliance, it provides for a quia time injunction, which means an injunction that aims at stopping further threats of misconduct or injury. In addition to that, there was proof that threats would eventually inflict harm in the future, allowing for a quia time injunction to be enforced. Meanwhile, in the case of Cell Steel Limited vs Elton House Holding Limited, the Courts of Appeal has made an incorrect order against the lesser. Having given a 99-year loan, the lesser had no authority to compromise further with the plaintiff rights of way by building a car wash. It was shown that there must be a reasonable possibility of violation of the rights of the complainant in order to show an aspect of serious apprehended harm. In Hooper vs Rogers, damage was awarded instead of allowing the excavated slope to be restored in order to mitigate future damage. It should be remembered that there is a difference in opinion as to the degree of risk of harm needed for a court to issue a quia time and injunction. In the case of Ryanair Limited vs AER Rianta CPT, it was held that there must be no fair probability of a bona fide defense. It could be more difficult to prove as a matter of fact that there was a reasonable danger of potential harm to constitute the issuance of such an injunction and also the seriousness of the harm must be weighed against the possibility of its occurring. Okay, we move to the next cases. In Viva Mall Sundar Berhad and Another's vs TDC Construction Sundar Berhad and Another's, it was held that the numerous telephone calls and the SMS from the defendant amounted to a harassment. In this case, the plaintiff were justified in being frightened of their well-being. 
the court's rule in Attorney General v. Red Mines and Pembroke Joint Hospital Board that if there was inconsistent expert evidence in the case, the judge should not make an opinion himself as an expert and that if the consequence of the dispute was to leave him in doubt, he would not have been able to conclude if the case had been brought. Furthermore, an action against building of a smallpox hospital required a proof of actual and real danger, almost amounting to moral certainty and if the hospital be established, it will be an actionable nuisance. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Alright, we are about to wrap up our presentation. So, in conclusion, the theory derived from those authorities is that the question which the court asked in all cases is whether, having regard to all the relevant circumstances, there was a reasonably strong possibility that an injunction would be needed in order to prevent the complainant from being injured in order to justify bringing the proceedings. Thus, in order to justify going to court, there must be a concrete, strong and observable danger of needing an injunction to do justice in all circumstances. If the defendant did not actually intend to do the act at the date of the trial, therefore, in most cases, the issue of whether there was a reasonably good possibility of justifying the proceedings would be definite. And that is all from our group. Thank you very much. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Have a great time.